Understanding heat gain and loss, as well as U-factors. There's a number of ways that doors, windows, as well as skylights can gain and lose heat. Let's review them now. Number one, the radiation of heat into a house, typically from the sun and out of a house from room temperature objects, such as people, furniture, and interior walls, direct conduction through the glass or glazing, frame and or door. Number two, direct conduction through the glass or glazing, frame or door. Number three, air leakage through and around these openings. All of these properties can be measured and rated according to the following energy performance characteristics. Now let's take a look at U-Factor. The Department of Energy, or the DOE, and the Environmental Protection Agency have developed an Energy Star designation for products meeting certain energy performance criteria. Windows that have the Energy Star designation will be labeled showing the zones in which it is qualified. Since energy efficient performance of windows, doors, and skylights varies by climate, product recommendations are given for four U.S. climate zones. For making comparisons among Energy Star products, use the NFRC label or the NFRC Certified Products directory. The rate of heat loss is indicated in terms of the U-factor or the U-value of a window assembly. The lower the U-factor, the greater a window's resistance to heat flow and the better its insulating properties. The nationally recognized rating method by the National Fenestration Rating Council, or the NFRC, is for the whole window, including glazing, frame, and spacers. Center of glass, U-factor, is also sometimes referenced, and describes the performance of the glazing alone without the effects of the frame. For most energy efficient windows, the whole window U-factor is higher than the center of glass U-factor. High performance double pane windows can have U-factors of 0.30 or lower, while some triple pane windows can achieve U-factors as low as 0.15. Low U-factors are most important in heating dominated climates, although they are also beneficial in cooling dominated climates. Energy Star provides recommended U-factors for your climate. Additionally, the Window Selection Tool compares average simulated energy costs for your location based on various window types. We've included a sample of how to input the data for your location as well as a resulting report in the course following this video component. So what's the difference between U-factor and R-value? While the U-factor is used to express the insulation value of windows, R-value is used for insulation in most other parts of the building envelope, such as the walls, floors, and roof. While they are related, different assumptions and test criteria are used in calculating the two values, so they cannot be directly converted. To compare R-value and U-factor, divide 1 by the U-factor number. For example, a 0.25 U-factor equals a 1 divided by 0.25, resulting in a 4R value. The rate at which a window, door, or skylight conducts non-solar heat flow is what U-factor is. So the lower the U-factor, the more energy efficient the window, door, or skylight is. The window selection tool will take you through a series of design conditions pertaining to your design and location. It is a step-by-step decision-making tool to help determine the most energy efficient window for your home. We use the window selection tool to compare how various window or skylight types will affect estimated energy cost for a typical home in your location. We get general feedback on certain design conditions such as orientation, shading, and window area. We find manufacturers who offer windows and skylights within the category shown. And you can learn more about the manufacturer's specific product options. Next we look at Solar Heat Gain Coefficient or the SHGC. A fraction of solar radiation admitted through a window, door, or skylight is transmitted directly and or absorbed and subsequently released as heat inside your home. 
The lower the SHGC, the less solar heat it transmits and the greater its shading ability. A product with a high SHGC rating is more effective at collecting solar heat gain during the winter. A product with a low SHGC rating is more effective at reducing cooling loads during the summer by blocking heat gain from the sun. Therefore, the SHGC needed for a window, door, or skylight should be determined by such factors as climate, orientation, and external shading. Next we look at air leakage. The rate of air infiltration around a window, door, or skylight is the presence of a specific pressure difference across it expressed in units of cubic feet per minute per square foot of frame area. A product with a low air leakage rating is tighter than one with a high air leakage rating. Let's look at light to solar gain. Light to solar gain is the ratio between the SHGC and the VT. It provides a gauge of the relative efficiency of different glass or glazing types in transmitting daylight while blocking heat gains. The higher the number, the more light that's transmitted without adding excessive amounts of heat. This energy performance rating isn't always provided. Next we look at sunlight transmittance. The ability of a window, door, or skylight to transmit sunlight into a home can be measured and rated according to the following energy performance characteristics. Visible transmittance. Visible transmittance is the fraction of the visible spectrum of sunlight between 380 and 720 nanometers. It's weighted by the sensitivity of the human eye that is transmitted through the glazing of a window, door, or skylight. A product with a higher VT transmits more visible light. VT is expressed as a number between 0 and 1. The VT needed for a window, skylight, or door should be determined by the home's daylighting requirements and or whether the interior glare in a space needs reducing. Next we look at heating dominated climates. In heating dominated climates, major glazing areas should generally face south to collect solar heat during the winter when the sun is low in the sky. In the summer, when the sun is high overhead, overhangs or other shading devices such as awnings prevents excessive heat gain. To be effective, south-facing windows usually must have a solar heat gain coefficient or SHGC of greater than 0.6 to maximize solar heat gain during the winter. A U factor of 0.35 or less to reduce conductive heat transfer and a high visible transmittance VT for good visible light transfer. Windows on east, west and north facing walls are reduced in heating climates while still allowing for adequate daylight. East and west facing windows are limited because it is difficult to effectively control the heat and penetrating rays of the sun when it is low in the sky. These windows should have a low SHGC and or be shaded. North facing windows collect little solar heat, so they are used just to provide useful lighting. Low E window glazing can help control solar heat gain and loss in heating climates. Next we look at passive solar window design. Properly designed and energy efficient windows represent a cost effective way to use solar energy for heating. Windows are an important element in passive solar home designs because they can reduce heating, cooling and lighting needs in a home. Passive solar design strategies vary by building location and regional climate. The basic techniques involving windows remain the same. Select the orientation and the size of glass to control solar heat gain, along with the different glazings, usually selected for different sides of the house. In other words, the exposures or orientations. For most regions in the U.S., homeowners will want to maximize solar heat gain in the winter and minimize it in the summer. Next, we look at cooling dominated climates. In cooling climates, particularly effective strategies include preferential use of north facing windows and generously shaded south facing windows. 
windows with low SHGCs are more effective at reducing cooling loads. The following types of glazing helps to reduce solar heat gain and lowers a window's SHGC. Tinted windows, reflective, low E, and spectrally selective. Most of these glazing types, except for spectrally selective, also helps to lower a window's VT. Window gas fills. To improve the thermal performance of windows with insulated glazing, some manufacturers fill the space between the glass panes with gas. For these gas fills, window manufacturers use inert gases, ones that do not react readily with other substances. Because these gases have a higher resistance to heat flow than air, they, rather than air, are sealed between the window panes to decrease a window's U-factor. The most common types of gas used by window manufacturers includes argon and krypton. Argon is inexpensive, non-toxic, non-reactive, clear, and odorless. Krypton is more expensive but has a better thermal performance. Next we look at tinted windows, heat absorbing, glazing, or glass. Heat absorbing window glazing contains special tints that change the color of the glass. Tinted glass absorbs a large fraction of the incoming solar radiation through a window. This reduces the solar heat gain coefficient, visible transmittance, and glare. Some heat, however, continues to pass through tinted windows by conduction and re-radiation. Therefore, the tint doesn't lower a window's U-factor. However, inner layers of clear glass or spectrally selective coatings can be applied on insulated glazing to help reduce these types of heat transfer. Gray and bronze tinted windows, the most common we have, reduce the penetration of both light and heat into buildings in equal amounts. Blue and green tinted windows offer a greater penetration of visible light and slightly reduced heat transfer compared with other colors of tinted glass. In hot climates, black tinted glass should be avoided because it absorbs more light than heat. Tinted, heat absorbing glass reflects only a small percentage of light, so it does not have the mirror-like appearance of reflective glass. You should note, when windows transmit less than 70% of visible light, indoor plants can die or grow very slowly. Let's take a look at insulated window glazing or glass. Insulated window glazing refers to windows with two or more panes of glass. They are also called double glazed, triple glazed, and in some cases we call them storm windows. To insulate the window, the glass panes are spaced apart and hermetically sealed to form a single glazed unit with an air space between each pane of glass. The glass layers and the air spaces resist heat flow. As a result, insulated window glazing primarily lowers the U-factor, but it also lowers the solar heat gain coefficient. Some window manufacturers use spacers, which separate two panes of glass that conduct heat less readily than others. These spacers can further lower a window's U-factor. Low E window glazing or glass. Low E coatings on glazing or glass control heat transfer through windows with insulated glazing. Windows manufactured with low E coatings typically cost about 10 to 15% more than regular windows, but they reduce energy loss by as much as 30 to 50%. A low E coating is microscopically thin, virtually invisible metal or metallic oxide layer deposited directly onto the surface of one or more of the panes of glass. The low E coating reduces the infrared radiation from a warm pane of glass to a cooler pane, thereby lowering the U-factor of the window. Different types of lower E coatings have been designed to allow for high solar gain, moderate solar gain, or low solar gain. A low E coating can also reduce a window's visible transmittance unless the window's glazing is spectrally selective. To keep the sun's heat out of the house for hot climates, with east and west facing windows and unshaded south facing windows, the low E coating should be applied to the outside pane of glass. 
If the windows are designed to provide heat energy in the winter and keep heat inside the house, typically in a cold climate, the low E coating should be applied to the inside pane of glass. Window manufacturers apply low E coatings in either soft or hard coats. Soft low E coats degrade when exposed to air and moisture. They are easily damaged and they have a limited shelf life. Therefore, manufacturers carefully apply them in insulated multiple pane windows. Hard, low E coatings, on the other hand, are more durable and can be used in add-on or retrofit applications. The energy performance of hard coat, low E films is slightly poorer than that of soft coat films. Although low E coatings are usually applied during manufacturing, some are available for do-it-yourselfers. These films are inexpensive compared to the total window replacements. They last from 10 to 15 years without peeling. They save energy, they increase comfort, and they reduce fabric fading. Let's look at reflective window glazing or glass. Reflective coatings on window glazing or glass reduce the transmission of solar radiation. They block more heat than light. Therefore, they greatly reduce a window's visible transmittance, or VT, and glare. But they also reduce a window's solar heat gain coefficient, or the SHGC. Reflective coatings usually consist of thin metallic layers. They come in a variety of metallic colors, including silver, bronze, and gold. Reflective window glazing is commonly used in hot climates where solar heat gain control is critical. However, the reduced cooling energy demands that they achieve can be offset by the resulting need for additional electrical lighting. So reflective glass is mostly used just for special applications. Spectrally selective window glazing or glass. A special type of low E coating is spectrally selective. Spectrally selective coatings filter out 40 to 70% of the heat normally transmitted through insulated windows, glass, or glazing, while allowing the full amount of light to be transmitted. Spectrally selective coatings can be applied on various types of tinted glass to produce customized glazing systems capable of either increasing or decreasing solar gains according to the aesthetic and climactic effects desired. Computer simulations have shown that advanced window glazing with spectrally selective coatings can reduce the electric space cooling requirements of new homes in hot climates by more than 40%. We conclude with daylighting. Daylighting is the use of windows and skylights to bring sunlight into the home. Today's high energy efficient windows, as well as advances in lighting design, allow efficient use of windows to reduce the need for artificial lighting during daylight hours, without causing heating or cooling problems. The best way to incorporate daylighting in a home depends on the local climate, as well as the home's design. The sizes and locations of windows should be based on the cardinal directions rather than their effect on the street side appearance of the house. South-facing windows are most advantageous for daylighting and for moderating seasonal temperatures. They allow most winter sunlight into the home, but little direct sun during the summer, especially when properly shaded. North-facing windows are also advantageous for daylighting. They admit relatively even natural light, producing little glare and almost no unwanted summer heat gain. Although east and west facing windows provide good daylight penetration in the morning as well as the evening, respectively, they should be limited. They may cause glare, admit a lot of heat during the summer when it's usually not wanted and contribute little to the solar heating during the winter. If you have a client that's constructing a new house, they may want to consider daylighting as part of their whole house design. It's an approach for building an energy efficient home.